Welcome to the talk show Promising Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. Well, today we will discuss the issues related to the elections to the 12th parliament, formations of the cabinet and coming sessions indeed. And to suit the very purposes, we have invited two guests. One is Professor Dr. Sabir Choudhury. How are you? Yeah, I am fine. Thank you. How are you? Fine. Well, other being Mr. Munirud Jaman Munir, Member Central Subcommittee, Liberation War Affairs, Awami League. How are you, Mr. Munir? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, fine. Okay. Well, Dr. Sabir, you are our regular guest indeed. And we used to have so many things from you. And you know very well that election to the 12th parliament already held. And already minister, council of ministers have been, has been formed. And session, parliament sessions is going to be held on 30th of this month. Taking all this in together, how do you view this scenario? Uh, thank you. The scenario is a little complicated for some reasons because uh, this new panel mm. of ministers, they take oath and in the beginning, uh, they are facing few challenges, we believe, that the thing is few of them are internal and some of them are international as well. So, in the internal, we may say that there are some crisis in the uh, economy. So, the other is if in the coming days there will be some sort of stability of this kind of things from the uh, some political parties and in the international scenario we know about the you know some sort of views and um, prompt actions from the some western countries. So, uh, at this moment this is the situation and the present government already they are receiving some sort of uh, congratulations from few countries. Uh, some other countries, mostly the western countries, they are uh, criticizing uh, the last parliament election on 7th January. So, the government uh, should come up with some uh, reactive and proactive plans to face the challenges in the coming days. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saber Choudhury. Well, Mr. Munir Jaman Munir, being a leader of the ruling Aum League, you are very vocal in the world of social media and talk show world. What Professor Saber Choudhury said, how do you analyze these things from your standpoint? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Uh, thanks to my another guest, uh, teacher of Dhaka University. Uh, at first, I like to congratulate our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who has shown in the Prime Minister for the record fifth time. The cabinet, in my opinion, very wisely and judiciously. You see the cabinet minister like Sabiration Choudhury, Dr. Shamantulal Shen, Asadujan Khan Kamal, that state, I think uh, this time cabinet is more more better than previous cabinet like 2009, 2014, 2018. I think this cabinet is more capable and they will run very well in future. Uh, my brother said some challenges or complicated situation internal and international. But we know uh, after election already uh, even Australia, Germany, uh, YC members and another Muslims country, uh, Russia, India already congratulated our new government. So, there was another challenge before election uh, that was some kind of anarchy like 
uh, in fact we are calling them as a opposition on the state BNP or another their partner they tried uh, to uh, make unstable so they failed and uh, election was I think it was more more better and before 2014 and 2018. Well, thank you very much uh, for your analysis. Well, Mr. Saber Choudhury, we know very well that say, there are some portfolios in the cabinet like Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Home, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Planning and Minister of Trade and Commerce. You have seen who are the people that they are. What is your understanding about the persons working as ministers there? Uh, well, in those ministries, these are very important ministry and to face the present situation, the challenges which I mentioned earlier, uh, these ministries are very relevant. So, in one uh, way, few of them don't have enough experiences is dealing with these uh, ministries. But the thing Honorable Prime Minister when she uh, selected these people, maybe there are some sort of uh, strategies and visions which she understand very well. And the thing is uh, before commenting on these, we need to see what are their plans for the upcoming days. After that, it would be easier for us to comment on this. And uh, at this point, we are just waiting uh, for the, you know, uh, already the member of the parliament, they took oath. And uh, we are um, hoping that um, maybe in the last of this uh, month, they will uh, start, the parliament will in function. So, what will be the discussion in uh, the coming parliament and in this ministry, it is important. And another thing I would like to mention here, it is the month of January. And most of the government in our country, they don't have good reputation in expanding the you know, yearly budget. And the present government, very quickly, they need to work uh, for preparing the next budget. So, ministries will be very busy soon in preparing the budgets and other things. So, it is another challenge because we already know there are many projects, some of them are used, uh, which has to be completed within this June. So, this time, especially the finance ministry, the economic ministry and other ministries, they need to take some prompt measures and the um, seasoned bureaucrats, they are with them. Uh, if they are not very prompt in dealing with this situation, maybe again we will go on to hear that uh, we are not capable in spending the budget of the last year. So, yeah, this is the situation. You know very well that budget making is a part of the NBR and mostly they prepare the budget and it pass, they get it done and the finance minister just read it out in the house, then the member of parliament say yes or no. And do you think this type of may, budget making is very much uh, favorable to the overall standing of the parliament? Uh, NBR play usually a huge role but the thing is at first the finance ministry they ask for the you know requirement of different ministries they calculate the revenue collections and they try to find out the deficit and uh, see their expertise and experience in the last budgets as well so depending on these situations they calculate the overall scenario and uh, come up with the next budget but the thing is, uh, in the parliament, we need always a viable discussion, which is very important. And at present, uh, the general people, uh, we can't deny that they are 
facing price hike, especially those who are uh, living with a fixed income. It is very difficult for them to uh, going for there and to maintaining the livelihood. So in this way, um, it is also important that this budget should be more people friendly. And the government, and I think the, the, the government also understand very well, we are hoping that they will not uh, impose more taxes and other things which are um, very important in the life of the general people thank, as thank well. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sabir. Mr. Monit, Dr. Sabir says budget should be more friendly and to suit these very purposes, more and more member of parliament should get involved in the budget making process, which is very much absent in Bangladesh context. What is your opinion? I especially, I like to th uh, uh, I like to say something regarding budget. Uh, I am not expert is at all. I am a political worker. So, uh, being a political worker, uh, I like to see the budget. Uh, it's uh, friendly for the general people, mass people. Uh, those who are hard worker. So I think uh, budget should be like that for the uh, poor people. Uh, those who are uh, uh, in our country, those who are doing a struggle uh, to survive their lives. So I think uh, uh, you should uh, talk to others, those who are expert is regarding budget, uh, our uh, national economist or another teacher like uh, Mr. Sabbir, uh, they can uh, deliver like this issue. But I think our leader Sheikh Hasina, uh, uh, last when uh, she has became first prime minister, 1996. Uh, after that, we see she has uh, under her leadership, we achieved a lot of things. So, Sheikh Hasina is a political phenomenon who has guided the rise of his nation of 170 million people, jute producer into the Asia Pacific state, expanding economy over the past decade. In office since 2009, after an earlier term from 96 to 2001, she is the world's longest serving female head of government. She has established herself in the global stage and earned accolades from all over the world. From beginning one of the poorest countries at its foundation, it attained lower middle income. Mm classification in 2015 and is now on track to graduate from the events less developed country status in 2026. The GDP at current price is Bangladesh 44 lakhs 39,273 crore and per capita mm -hmm. income is Bangladesh 2657 as per Bangladesh economic review. 2023 published by finance division. Poverty rate came down to 18.7 percent. All this happened under the charismatic leadership of Sheikh Hasina and the commitment of Aumili government to our motherland. So, we like to believe and we should keep confidence on our leader Sheikh Hasina. Thank you very much. Viewers, we are going for a short break. Please keep watching. <music> Viewers, we are back to the talk show. Promising Bangladesh is sponsored by Crown Cement. And we are having talks with two brilliant citizens of Bangladesh. One is Mr. Saber Choudhury. Chairman, Department of Peace and Conflict, Dhaka University, and other being Mr. Munirjwan Muni, Member, Central Subcommittee, Liberation, War Affairs, Bangladesh Aumili. 
well, Mr. Sabir Choudhury. We know very well there are a lot of standing, each standing committees in parliament and each standing committee is looking after the ministry, respective ministry. In Bangladesh context, the power and functions of the standing committee now is more important in the context of 21st century. What is your explanation? According to law and according to the system, I think uh, they don't have a problem in their power or in the, you know, in functioning. But the main problem is the, you know, in operation. In most of the committees, usually the, you know, uh, head of the committees from the ruling party. And when this is the situation and we are not seeing a very, you know, uh, good present of the member of the, you know, oppositions. And in this parliament, it would be naturally very difficult to identify that who is going to monitor, criticize, and give a proper direction to these ministries, which is the main function of this standing committee, like the you know, public expenditure, public accounts, this kind of committees. So government, for their own sake, to some extent, they need to be accountable to this committee. Otherwise, sometimes, you know, when they are spending monies or, you know, doing their regular functions, mm -hmm. there is no sort of criticism and monitoring. So, uh, in this way, if they are, you know, uh, challenged for their activities in the coming days, somehow it would be very difficult. So, there need to be uh, oversight on these committees. But we believe that when uh, Honorable Prime Minister, she is coming up with so many different sort of models, maybe in this aspect, she will select uh, some people in this standing committees, mostly as the heads, who can go for self-criticism and give the government a proper direction not only think that they are my fellow party member, it would not be uh, wise to criticize them. Because this sort of criticism in most of the ways in most of the countries give a proper direction in the everyday function of the government. Thank you very much. Mr. Manuel Jaba. in a parliamentary process, each and every bill is referred to, to the standing committee of the respective ministry and therefore it is believed the standing committee must be of that stage and standing with the people and member of parliament having the required experience or required education and exposure and we have seen in the past there are a lot of flaws in this and the coming standing committee in the 12th parliament what type of standing committee you desire uh, I think uh, uh, what he said, uh, I do agree with his uh, statement regarding standing committee. I think those who are a seasoned politician and those who became member of parliament several times, those who belong some special quality uh, uh, to talk to the meeting, especially uh, budget or another issues. So I think uh, there should be like seasoned politician and technically sound. Uh, if we can make sure, then it will work. Thank you very much. Mr. Sabir Chaudhary, we have seen in the past the member of parliament belong to a political party, belong to a political party or the business community. Sometime, most of the time, they are in the same standing committee, which is called the conflict of interest. And as a chairman of Peace and Conflict Department of Dhaka University, you understand better what is conflict. What is your suggestion about the coming composition of the standing committee in the 12th parliament? It would be difficult because, you know, uh, most of the members in one data maybe it is 67 percent or something like that those who are businessmen and in this way 
it is natural they are involved in different sort of uh, business groups or their business enterprises. But the thing is, if the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, she is very good in uh, these things, if she can motivate them uh, in a way that we should work for the betterment of the country. And in that case, maybe there will be some sort of try to play a neutral role, which is naturally very difficult. But the thing is, uh, this head of these committees should be technically sound, which uh, my honorable another panel members, she, he mentioned that it is also important. Sometimes we see that someone is playing this role who do not have this kind of experience in working these committees. And another combination, in this cabinet, there are a lot of ministers, those who are not that is it. So, if some seasoned politicians who are outside of the cabinet, if they are going to play this role, because you are going to criticize a minister or the activities or function a ministry, then you need to have some sort of standing or guards to oversee or the you know to monitor. So, if you know the some politicians like those who are you know have huge experience in different sort of fields, if they will be uh, the head of these committees and you know some uh, members from the you know those who are independent candidates, they have uh, some sort of acceptability already in the public arena. If they will be also included as members, then it would be you know very easier or uh, but the thing is you understand that still there are some sort of uh, gap in doing these things, but this is the combination we need to deal with the combination at this moment, there Thank is no other much. way. Thank you very much. Mr. Mundur Jaman, out of 300 member of parliaments elected and Sony, 199 belong to the business community. It means only 26 season politicians are in the parliament. Uh, I, then how can you ensure <laughs> no conflict of interest in the standing committee? That's true. Uh, I am coming here. Uh, before that, I'd like to uh, share something uh, regarding uh, chairman of uh, ministries. Uh, I like to say, uh, like Amir Senamu, Tufail Ahmed, Rajuddin Raju, those who are seasoned politician, uh, countrywide, they have followers and uh, you know, uh, those who are uh, seasoned politician getting uh, a lot of uh, experiment, struggle, uh, they became pure personality. Uh, so, I think if the if you can make them chairperson, any ministry, they can control, they can raise a voice regarding that ministry. That is why I say it, uh, uh, chairman should be like that, Amir Sina Mutafal Ahmed, like the way uh, the committee will run well. Uh, regarding 67 uh, businessmen, uh, uh, 67 my, person. another, uh, 67 person uh, businessman uh, in this parliament, uh, it is not true at all because uh, you know 2007 uh, that is called 111 government, uh, they made a uh, law or something like that, a politician will have to have 10 certificate. Look, I am a purely political worker, but I had to submit my team. But I am a seasoned political, seasoned political worker. I am working as a political worker in 1986. Till today, I am doing politics. But I had to show the election commission I am maintaining team. And it's a very good uh, logic. And, in, good logic indeed. Yes. Yeah. So I have to show my ten certificate, and I became the businessman. 
but I do not know the ABC of business. I do not have any sort of knowledge regarding business, but I have to do something for my family, for my politics, that is different issue. But you are calling me, you are trading me as a businessman, but I am not. That is why uh, we are always uh, hearing there is 199 uh, 199 parliament members are businessmen. This is not right at all. Look, uh, in 1996, at first, we hired some businessmen. Uh, due to in 1991, 27th February, after Ashad regime, uh, our leader Sheikh Hasina did not give the nomination business magnet or civil bouquet or army bouquet. But smartly, BNP has done the has offered businessman, civil bouquet, army bouquet uh, to compete their election and they own that election. After this, our leader Sheikh Asinia realized we should change our motto and we hired some businessmen like Chabrishan Choudhury, Dr. Iqbal. Like the way the businessman in our party came, but in a broader way, after the killing of Bangabundu, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, after 75, uh, in our politics, we can see businessman, army person, civil bouquet offering Mr. Uh, late Jeevur Rahman. And that was the way to involve our politics businessmen, but it is not expected. Politics should be made by politician, those who are come from grassroots level. Of course, you have to share with others, like a sports minister. I think, in my opinion, it should come from a pure uh, a sports organizer or a sportsman or cultural minister should be like the way. But as a whole, maximum member of parliament should come from political arena, pure politician, pure political worker, then nation will run well. It is my believe and firmly I believe that. Thank you very much. Mr. Chabar Chaudhary, Mr. Monerajan believes the politicians should be, more and more politicians should get involved in parliamentary politics also. But what about the reality is that it did not happen. It goes beyond our imagination also. But it is reality. So whether you do business or not, you are a businessman in terms of teen certificate or your income certificate, all these things. But reality is that this parliament is dominated by the businessmen. And if the businessmen are get opportunity to be on the same ministry, standing committee, nothing can be done. But you can you may have only twenty six season politicians and you are you have more than forty ministries. You need the other people with you. Only the chairman does not mean the standing committee is okay. So, there is a debacle to some extent. What is the suggestion to get rid of this peculiar situation it is? Thank you. Here the most important thing is operationalization of the definition of the definition of businessmen and the politicians. We need to do some things. We need to earn money for our livelihood. Government is not, you know, give the politician salary or something like that. It's one another issue. But the thing is, if we 
find out the definition of the businessman like that in most of the cases which is the debatable one that a person who has no sort of involvement in the politics in their entire life suddenly for gaining some sort of prestige maybe he or she has you know thousands crore in his pocket and he will think that I get everything in my life so sure. why I should not be the member of the parliament sometimes they buy the position they spend money and you understand the situation some politicians politicians like my honorable member those who were giving you know, everything in the life for the you know this politics they are working for certain areas what will be their ultimate outcome if they can't spend huge amount of money sometimes it would be very difficult for them to get the nomination True. so especially we need to find out and determine this kind of politicians and in no way these people should not be encouraged by any political party and this is not the only contribution of the ruling party most of the parties they are equally contributed in this situation that's why we are now in such kind of position in pen and paper there are so many things in the guidelines of the election commission there are so many things but we know as the you know, election observer that what is the situation in the field how much money a candidate should spend well how much money candidate should spend i will come to you after a short break viewers we are going for a short break and come to you very soon Viewers, we are back to the talk show Promising Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. And we are having talks with two giant speakers here. One is Professor Dr. Saber Choudhury, Depart Chairman, Department of Peace and Conflict, Dhaka University, other being Mr. Munir Jaman, belonging to Aomi League. Well, Mr. Saber Choudhury, recently we have seen there are two reports, one by TIB, Transparency International Bangladesh, other by Good Governance for Citizenship, which is called Sujong, or Citizens for Good Governance, whatever it is. TIB said in the extreme point, who is the Secretary General, General Secretary of Aumilik says, he is a lobbyist for Aumilik. On the other hand, Sujon. Lobbyist for BNP. Lobbyist for BNP. <laughs> BNP. On other Sujon, it is more or less moderate mm. report indeed. What is your study on the two reports the thing is uh, from our experience in the last election there are different sort of understanding from different areas in the urban areas we got one picture in the local scenarios there are another picture in the urban areas we all of we know that you know the presence of the voters were not satisfactory at all in most of the cases. But in the local areas, that is why maybe Honorable Prime Minister encourage the independent candidates to be involved in the election that for some local reasons, they you know are very active in the local scenario and motivated people to cast their votes. Again, there are also some incidents in different constituencies which were very much available in the social media. The, it would be you know, some sort of put a question mark in the whole process. That is why some of the local NGOs, those who are working with election they are thinking that if the election commission do not have this sort of capacity of conducting election maybe the area is huge we do not have enough manpower maybe they can, can go for two or three days for you know give better result because in India we know that this election process is sometimes you know it take uh, one month as well. 
So, there should be some sort of ways and understanding we need to come up with to solve the situation. And already the ruling party, they are giving different sort of statements and their explanation. But the thing is, this process uh, and this kind of processes should be uh, withdrawn from the you know, whole system. And the other thing, the pluralism as well should be ensured, because if this is the way, uh, sometimes the whole political process should be questionable. And I am not sure in which way the ruling party will accommodate this kind of things. And the another thing, upholding human rights for the better interest of the nation and the country is also important and ensuring social justice for everyone. We understand the spirit of our constitution and when the present um, constitution and the you know the, the par this parliament will going to be in operation, we hope that it will bring us some sort of positivity in the functioning and in ensuring the development of the Thank country. Thank you very much. Ensuring the development of the country which uh, Professor Sabarusin asserted and emphasized. Mr. Monirusin, you know very well TIV, there are some sorts of declassification in the registration of the observer. TIV is not a, not a registered observer. So, it is an organization which speaks for the people, for the country and of course, very close observer without being registered in the election commission. How do you explain all these things? Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, I do not uh, like to uh, disagree uh, regarding their report. I like to, uh, uh, it is my personal opinion, uh, government should or political party how many can uh, can work regarding this issue, what they raised regarding election. In fact, uh, my uh, my brother, my uh, panelist, another panelist, uh, he has said regarding broadcasting. Uh, I want to say something regarding this issue. Urban area and local area, especially urban area, Dhaka four, Dhaka five. It was very competitive election because uh, there was a, a strong independent candidate. When some constituency got a strong independent candidate, so they tried to bring their voters in center. That is why broadcasting was more than another seat like Dhaka. Dhaka 8. So, 41.8 percent, there is another political, major political party did not participate this election. So, I think 41.8 percent, it is much more better. In abroad or another countries, very oftenly we uh, show as example like Britain, USA, how much people cast their vote. So, 41.8 percent is remarkable. After 7th January, uh, those who came from abroad at Ganhababon, they talked to our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. They deliberately said regarding national election, what was type, what type of election was held. So, they said it was free, fair and credible election. And sometimes TAB and Shujan, I think they can deliver their position, biased position, I think. But as a whole, election was very peaceful. Well, thank you very much uh, for your explanation. Well, Ms. Dr. Saber Choudhury, 
TIP report says constitutionally election is valid, but politically it is in question because it is not a participatory election from the point of view, major opposition did not take part in the election. That is not participatory and competitive, but elections are there. What is your overall focus on it? Uh, yes, to some extent they are true uh, according to the definition in the, you know, the having an international standard of conducting an election, uh, there should be open field for all the parties to take participate and to some extent it is sometimes uh, the ruling party need to take the, you know, most of the roles to ensure the participation. And the thing is, it is the right of the people to choose their representative and there should be some sort of enough options for them. There are debates in bo both ways, present political parties is saying and they are also uh, said that for the continuation and for, you know, uh, making the constitution um, uphold the spirit, we need to continue and uh, conduct election. So, this kind of things are also very important. We do not expect this kind of violences from the local constituencies, otherwise it would give a different sort of message to the national and international community. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabir Choudhury, because you are <coughs> teaching at the Department of Peace and Conflict, so never encourage violence. That is the preconditions of your teaching. And thank you, Mr. Munir Jamuni, for participating in this very talk show. Viewers, and we are about the end of this talk show. Viewers, we are about to end part of this talk show. And before ending this talk show, I have to summarize what the two speakers spoke here. Both of them spoke very eloquently and cleanly and clearly what they believe, what they understand and how they explain the whole situation is up to them, but the message is up to you. But one thing is very important, but both of them emphasize free and fair election is precondition for a democracy. At the same time, I raise the question with standing committee, both of them view the same mind, express the same mind because they are of the same opinion. The standing committee is a part and parcel of the parliament and if the standing committee work as a overviewers, as a monitors of the ministry concerned, then it is a plus point for the whole parliament and parliament itself is, can play a vital role because each and every bill usually refers to the standing committee concerned. And from that standpoint, it is also true the conflict of interest during, in the coming parliament will be, shall be one of the dimensional politics because most of them to some extent more or less belongs to the business community. And at the same time, they also believe the coming parliament, the coming session of the parliament is very important and they also believe that this parliament and this cabinet and the Council of Ministers shall be in a position to tackle the situation and challenges of 21st century. And let us believe the same thing. And thank you very much. We will meet you again in the next talk show. Thank you.